So the last game of Group A, fighting for that second spot, the Chiefs and not MVP, as we may have thought, as we may have expected, but instead it's Risky Gaming. So somewhat of a, a bit of an upset we just witnessed. And now uh, joining me on the desk is Blair and with, with Halvor, of course. So you are our local expert, essentially. So uh, do you have any quick thoughts? Any? I mean, obviously we just saw a surprising result. That was a very surprising result. I think that was uh, the biggest upset so far in the tournament, if you ask me, because Risky Gaming had the easiest route to the to IEM Taipei because they had to play the West Asian teams like teams of Saudi Arabia. To be very honest, I haven't heard most of the teams and some teams from India and whatnot, like some of the ex neck break lineup who well, yeah. basically got wrecked last time in ESO one Cologne qualifiers. So they had the easiest run to the tournament and meanwhile MVP Khan, they had the toughest. They had to go to Sky Red, NXL, all those eight Singaporean teams, some pretty stacked, you know, area Southeast Asia so to speak, like five or six countries is a lot of teams. And to see MVP get dumpstered like that on train, um, First game was a very surprising to see train. Yeah, it did feel like the pressure got to the net. You shouldn't be losing so heavily on against uh, the force buyers and the quasi buyers and the ecos and so on. But that seemed to be an issue that was pervasive through through you know not just that map but uh, previous one as well. So now it's going to be the Chiefs uh, able to actually have a shot here against Risky Gaming. They must be loving this. How, what are your first thoughts, Halvor? Just going to Risky Gaming and it's a rematch, of course. Yeah, no. I, if you're Chiefs, you're kind of preemptively celebrating. I think. And uh, nothing against Risky because they played way better than I expected of them and uh, it, it takes two to tango. So it's not just MVP not playing up to their A game, but it's also Risky b being good enough to take advantage of the mistakes that MVP actually makes. Right. So have, have we been counting Risky out all, all days? So I think that's the mistake we've all made as well. Like we thought Risky is going to be the, where the, the pure underdogs uh, alongside a team from Taiwan eat you alive. Yeah. And to be honest, they got 10 runs against Cyber Zen. That's yeah, I think that, that might have been a tiny bit inflated. Could be because yeah. I was in where kind of you know they taking it easy yeah. at, the, at the end. But the fact the way they kind of destroyed MVP Connell, yeah, they looked a little shaky initially, but they punished MVP for all those you know all the sloppy plays. And in the end, they closed it out very comfortably. In the end, some pretty nice shots coming out from the team. Of course, there were a few like plays which weren't that great. But the fact that MVP, I think MVP just basically had a bad day on the train. To be very honest, yeah, but, no, but at the same time, not taking anything away from Risky Esports, they yeah. did a pretty good job. Yeah, I, I, I like what I saw from Risky in the sense that you know Nami was hitting the off shots, uh, Kit Kat was doing uh, pretty good, playing aggressively towards A main. Like they, they all had, you know, they were all feeling their groove, and it was the complete opposite on MVP side. Yeah, uh, is that took quite a while to actually get going. Uh, which, and, and you know, if you're one of the two hard carries for your team, you kind of have to be hot right from the start. I think K's got off to an okay start, but. With them being so limited in terms of their, their economy on their uh, in their first half, it's limited what kind of impact you can do if you can't get up to that op, for instance. Indeed. And Kays just woke up at the last possible moment, and it yeah. didn't work out for him. So quite unfortunate for MVP Connell. But if you look at uh, Chiefs, I mean, they just got destroyed by CyberZ. What, I, they might be happy they're facing Risky right now, but what would the mindset be? Firstly, they chose Inferno against CyberZ. I have no idea how that happened. I just yeah. got back from the airport, just came in. I'm like, they chose Inferno against CyberZ? Okay. <laughs> All right then. So not doing their research, I think. I mean, I don't know. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? It's, they can't let that happen. They've they've fluffed it there, absolutely. But uh, going into into this match, what map are you expecting now? I mean, okay, the Chiefs bands might be a bit random if they're allowing Inferno to go through against Cyber Zen. But how do you expect uh, at least Risky Gaming to play this one out? Um, to be honest, I, w I feel Risky Gaming would try and uh, try and play a map like Dust to Mirage. They, uh, the thing with Risky Gaming, they're a pretty new team in the Middle East right now. Uh, there was a pretty big shuffle, I think, a few months back. So they're a pretty new team, and they're trying to start from scratch, basically. They play very, very, well, some would call it unimaginatively. But some would say very Navi-esque, slow pace style. But then some people are like, you know what, if you're going to try to play like Navi, you have to be like Navi. You have to be Navi. You've got to have your Guardian and your Flamey and your, you know, everyone else. But I like what they're trying to do. They're trying to take it slow, you know, try to build an actual team rather than try and, you know, YOLO it like most of the Asian teams do. Uh, the CD side is pretty effective compared to most, most Asian teams have a very efficient T side, very good T side, but the CD side is lacking a lot. I think only the two teams who do have a good CD side would be the MVP project guys from South Korea because they've been trained by the ex project KR, I think by Termi. So they oh. do have a pretty good CD side, solid CD side, but lack of firepower there again. The second Asian side, which is really good in CT, is CyberZen. And that's why they are, you know, perhaps, you know, some, some would say Tai Lu, but I still feel Cybers and have a slight edge over them. And I like what I'm seeing from Risky Gaming. They are trying to, you know, build a CD side, try to be less, 
you know what, just let's push into A, let's try pushing into B, you know, let's go for a basic fake. No, they're taking the time to think it's slow. I like this out of them. Even if they go home after losing this game, I think they just hold their heads up high and go back yeah. home. They're kind of building for long-term success instead of instant. Exactly. That's just going to fall off a cliff afterwards. Absolutely, I do appreciate it's kind it. kind of the opposite of the NA mentality <laughs> that we yeah. commonly see. Like, I have to say, because that is tends to be a trend Oh yeah, just in the NA. So. Make a roster move, hope that it's going to work for that one tournament, and then afterwards it's just gone. Yeah. Not just taking random pot shots at, at yeah. an A, but, well, where is but, uh, but yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> well, actually, there are so many burns to come. I mean, we're just warming warming up on the burns for Moses. So uh, he's, he generally does tend to be a bit of the punching bag on the on the desk. <laughs> Unfortunately, someone's got to be be the punching bag. But it's uh, not we do you have fault. he's from NA. Say again? He can't help it that he's from yeah. NA. I mean, yeah, he can't help it, but but he is Moses. He's from the NA. True. And he's he lost, frequently gets he lost pies in his face, literally, yeah, metaphorically. So. I mean, he lost AMAP against Sanders. He, lost, he also lost a... Can't really get worse for Moses, really. Kind of rock bottom for his career at the moment. Yeah. But uh, I do have the maps, and uh, you indeed were correct. We've got Dust 2 will be, will be the map. And just looking I at didn't the, expect to get that. the veto. So uh, the Chiefs, uh, they vetoed Train, Cobble, and Mirage. Risky Gaming, Inferno, Cash, and Overpass were vetoed by them. So giving us a Dust 2 matchup. I think this could actually go down to the wire. I really think, think so. Could, yeah, because, uh, well, Dust 2 is kind of like this the map of Asia, so to speak. And it really favors this very T-sided style of play that most Asian teams are more well known for. And having watched some of these players like Breaker, Breaker's off especially on, uh, while we did see Nami off most of the times, uh, if you look at Breaker's off, especially on Dust 2 and on Cobblestone, it is pretty impressive. It's not bad at all. So they do have at least two offers. And a dual op setup on, the, on Dust 2 could work out as long as they don't play you know, two Navi-esque and Dust 2. I think to mix it up a little bit, you know, don't try and be like, all right, boys, you're only going to make a play at 40 seconds remaining or 30 seconds remaining. Don't do that. Just mix it up a little bit. I think they can surprise Chiefs, because Chiefs, even though they have Top Gun, they look very shaky right now. Oh, yeah, they absolutely do. But so just to, to prod your, your mind, I guess, on, on Risky a bit more, because you said they're, they're building for that long term, pretty much even around playing Navi-esque. Do you, do you think they actually have the, the means to adapt if that doesn't work out for them? Like, do they know how to play a really up-tempo style? I haven't seen that from them so far. But, okay. it's a, but it's a very new team. And you know what? I saw a couple of rounds during train where they did seem to have an idea of what they plan to do. So I was honestly surprised because uh, most of the teams in Asia, they just ban train straight out. Trainer or Cobbleton and Overpass, you know, they yeah. tend to stick with the try and test of Mirage or Dust 2 or whatnot. So, they seem to have done their homework. No, not many people would have studied them. I think that's advantage they have. So they're trying to just uh, capitalize on that. No. It does feel to me that this is the battle of skills, you know, raw skills, which is great on Dust2. That, I, I think that's probably why you're saying this could go really close. But also the stability of the CT side that you know, you're, you're uh, alluding to regarding risky gaming, that could be you know, what really the helps them for. out. So, because, yeah, yeah I, I don't know which way Chiefs are going to go. I'd, they seem like just, a, just chaos. <laughs> this is just going to be chaos. What I mean, nice they're playing with two, two standards, of course, but, yeah. but In, still. Uh, I think Inferno City side was pretty bad. Yeah, no, they are. I know. I yeah, think so that's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, so I don't know what they're going to do in Dust 2. Like, they're, like, if you're not able to get your City side right on Inferno, look, all right. Savage was going ham, TV, everyone's going ham on Cyber Zen, but. He, you know, it was on a T side Inferno, right? You got to have a few rounds at least. I think they just had three rounds or four. Yeah, three. Three rounds on the CD side, which is honestly abysmal. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Uh, on Dust 2, well, it's going to be hard. Yeah. I, I be guess hard. the one benefit that Chiefs have going into this is the fact that Dust 2, as we've alluded to, it does allow for kind of puggy play style and uh, just random stuff to occur and have your your superior individual players shine through. So that's where someone like Top can, can take control over the game or or Sevzi, who's been playing pretty well so far. He's been getting a lot of frags. So even, even if they get in, into a spot where they they fall out of balance, they mess up their CT setups, that type of stuff, they can still manage to salvage it just by having experienced and solid players on their side. It does, it, I mean, I'm getting this feeling right now, the way this match is shaping up from the, our discussion on the desk, that a lot of this is, is going to come down to whether or not well, basically how the approach comes from Risky Game on the CT side. If they're able to have like a good solid amount of rounds there, because essentially I feel like, are we going to get a solution from Risky Gaming when it comes to you know the pushes? Are we going to get the smokes in the right places? Because generally speaking, you need a, a team that's got a lot of drills and coordination that's going to have the right flashes and smokes to disable a, a good AWPA, for example, or to, to try to you know deposition the defense to create holes uh, instead of doing it kind of in a, more of a kind of, you know, just winging it, but just trying to hit the shots basically. Because that, 
I feel like if we get a slower game from Risky Gaming, they're stable. And they look pretty stable on the last they were, map. They were looking pretty stable. Hitting their slow, shots. Yeah. Then yeah, the, that's going to be hard for, for uh, the Chiefs. Yeah, and it could definitely pose a problem. But I guess in the end, I'm, I'm always going to favor Chiefs. Just because they have... You're not going to be hot, are you? Because we, we already discussed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no. Not, that's on that's the thing. I'm not going with my heart. Okay, it, all right, it'd good. be more fun to have a team from you know, the Emirates to, to actually go through than potentially another Australian team. I guess plus New Zealand. Yeah, because uh, I'm expecting Renegades to go through tomorrow. But well, you know, you want as much diversity <laughs> as possible. But I guess any, yeah, anything. Can Can't happen. wait to talk about Renegades tomorrow. No, no, it's but it's, interesting. Like my heart wants uh, Risky to, to actually go through, but I think just it's hard to go against Chiefs, even though they look shaky. It might also be a, be a case of them just needing to warm up and kind of play into play into the tournament and actually just get comfortable with their setting, being on a stage, all that stuff. So. I don't think they're going to take the loss to Cybersend too too hard on them. I, I, don't, I don't think they're going to worry too much about it. It's, uh, yeah, they weren't expected to win that match, to put it that way. Yeah, and to be fair, they were hitting the shots they were supposed to hit last map, which is, there is something to be said for that when you're when you're a lesser experienced team going into an environment like this, uh, for, you know, for some of them for the first time. A lot to be said for hitting the shots that you're supposed to hit. And yeah. you're setting everything up with the strategy and the approach and practice. You've got to hit the shots you're supposed to hit. I think that the first map was the cobble sending a cyber, a cyber zen starting on the CT side. Probably the worst possible place you could find yourself in this entire tournament. So, so yeah, it feels like Risky, risky game, Gaming is starting to really get, get going. So I, I, I'm feeling them. But I, I do enjoy the underdog story because if you look at Risky Gaming, they're in the Middle East where I think the two or three other good decent teams there, which they, they basically streamroll the most of the times, right? They can't play with the Asians because the ping's too high for them. Right. They can't play with the Europeans either. So, so they got to, ha you know, play in servers based in India because halfway between, um, you know, the Middle East and yeah. Asia. So I've seen them play, actually scrim against some of the uh, MVP Carnal guys. And even in Europe, right, it really quite doesn't work out. But here we go. Looks like we're going to go live here. Yeah, we've got the uh, knife round coming out. So, guys, uh, these predictions. Support. Give me some scores as well. Let's, let's go for some scores. Oh, uh, I'm going to go 16-10 in favor of Chiefs. All right, and yourself, Blair? <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm just going to play to the crowd. 16-13 for Risky. Well, I, I mean, I'm not supposed to do this, I guess, go on. the analyst, but I actually think Risky Gaming, I think if they're able to get a decent start going on their CT side, I feel like they can do this. I'm um, just looking at from the previous two games. Chiefs against MVP Carnal, they did win it, yeah. but it was 16-14, bear that yeah. in mind. I'm pretty sure. And of, of course, the maps are different. It's Inferno and Train, but uh, the other map which uh, Chiefs played, they just got yeah, dumpstered by CyberZen. Risky, on the other hand, yeah, sure, CyberZen dumpstered them as well, pretty much. Scoreline looks a little bit more, well, morally... Prettier. Yeah. Prettier, yeah, to, to look at, even though it was very clear. And, uh, well, uh, I really do feel Risky might have the edge here. All right, well, the game is getting underway, so it's time to throw it to Moses and Semler. What's going on, guys? Welcome back. This is going to be the last match of the day, Risky Gaming versus Chiefs. This is going to be sick. Risky Gaming just, uh, that was a big upset, actually. That was. We all predicted MVP to take it. I think yeah. everybody was thinking MVP would take it and that Risky were pretty much the, the underdogs in the match. And yeah. yeah. Sometimes that's how it goes, Moses. You know, you get under underdog upsets, you know? I mean, it's basically what NA hope for every tournament, right? So it's got to happen sometimes. <laughs> and of course, it is not with an NA team. But look at this. Most of the pistol round is already over, but they did aggressively push up middle, Risky did, taking the fight to Chiefs, and they've got themselves in a four on two. So Risky, I mean... Risky actually coming out ahead so far. They do lose a man who, you know, Breaker tried to push a little bit too aggressively there just to get the setup. And it is going to be a safe plant coming through. Nami will find one long range shot onto Light Step and Nami with the second one. So, in the end, Risky, they actually managed to keep control of the situation. That, that, I mean, that's actually kind of cool that they pushed up mid for that. Because this is the thing about Risky is like, you guys, you casted him in the first game of the day and they looked a little hesitant, a little sketchy Absolutely. at times. Absolutely. And now they put some rounds on CyberZen in that matchup and then they win a match and all of a sudden they've got this confidence. I'm like, actually, we can handle this. We can handle this stage pressure. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is just that, you know, taking the time to find yourself on stage like that. I mean, we can speak to that, Moses. You know, it is a little trippy when you're up there in front of everybody. Yeah, it does, it does feel a little bit weird your first couple times, but they're handling it so incredibly well. Now up 1-0 after winning that pistol. And straight up, well, all, all out aggression coming in here from Chiefs. They've got a single flash. And it's already gone out as well, deep, and it actually flashes themselves. So pretty much worst case scenario there for Chiefs. Hopefully they'll be able to get close enough to the site to actually get a bomb plant, but it's not going to happen. Havoc shows up, and with the help of Carry Bob, they get annihilated. Yeah, with that P90. The bomb is 
is actually not doing too much work, and Kit wow. gets caught off guard, but nice control of the weapon in a surprising situation. So 2-0 now, but with that bomb plant, no investment from Chiefs there. No armor, no, no real upgrade of pistols or utility, so this round they're going to go into it with five AK-47s. And they actually have the advantage. I mean, they're going up against the UMP still and then the two pharmacists. Is Kit going to live up to his team name right now? He is going to stay with the UMP. Well, okay then. I mean, if you make it across to B and you hold close uh, to the entrance from Dark, that, that could still work. I mean, Dexter might be in for a bit of a surprise, especially if Kit decides to go aggressive. Oh, the timing on that pop flash is perfect. Havoc gets that first kill. Going to drop one more flash himself, and here's Zuzi. He's got a good angle, but he can't win that battle. And there's still a man stuck on the outside right now. Carry, he falls back into pit just a second too late. And Senior going to go down and force Top Gun out into the open, and they're just not peeking behind this. Finally, they hunt him down. A little bit close. And it's going to be Dexter trying to take the fight in mid, but he gets caught. This is really, really good stuff to start this out from Risky. Light steps, the last one left in a one on four. He does win the initial battle. He's been run down solo, though. Five HP, one bullet's going to clean him out. There's another team flash, but it doesn't matter. Light steps not even looking the right way. So 3 0, and that's a great long hold from Risky. The timing on that initial pop flash and then the peek out together with that Molotov, able to mow everyone down. Yeah, that was actually really nicely done. And here I was focusing over on the B side, you know, B side of things. Dexter not really getting into the mix. Uh, Risky now are going to, well, for now at least, they can keep rinsing and repeating. It's going to be Chiefs who are reset. Two P250s, no nades to work with. Even a single flash at this point, somebody should take the hit. You know, yeah. just get that single flash, make that $200 investment just to give themselves a fighting chance of getting out onto a site. Just running out there with just straight Glocks and P250s. I mean, you're, you're basically just hoping to get massively lucky. Yeah, and on top of that, I mean, the money's going to start building up. Look at Brain with the P90 being hyper-aggressive. No one is an anti-eco. He gets the first one, can't get the second, but actually this is punishing Risky a little bit. A nice two-for-two two trade. That is going to be an AK-47 in the hands of Dexter, so something that Chiefs can work with. I mean, there's still no armor, but Nami with the angle spots one going towards Xbox. Now oh, they've got right. some good intel. I was about to say, do they actually have the HEs or anything to get the punish in there? No. And they are going to still be focusing a little bit on upper dark here. Kit, he's in position to catch the man out. There's the peak. And so light steps, wow. Wins that fight long range with a P250. Yeah, that is not good. Starts spraying a little bit early, but Dexter comes out mid. That allows Risky to even things up once again into a two on two. And flashbangs on the side of Risky, but nothing that Chiefs can use to cross. So they've taken a lot of damage. And at, at best right now, they're just hoping they can get this bomb planted. And Pop Flash is going to go over, and it looks like they don't want to allow it to happen. Uh, unfortunately, bomb plant will happen for him. And then the last man alive here for Chiefs, just going to try and hold his own, but it's not going to happen. Still, highly successful round, all things considered. What, they had three Glocks, two P250s, and they get three kills on a bomb plant. I mean, that's perfect if, yeah. you're, if you're on an eco round. Especially when we point out they have no nades to work with. So, I mean, Risky taking, you know, that, that aggressive stance on Catwalk, and they get punished for it. So, still a lot of money built up on the Risky side. We saw Kit with that UMP. He was managed to upgrade to an AK-47 for free, so he's got plenty of money. And look at the switch now. Double up set up for both teams. So that save and that plant helps out a lot. And Breaker and Nami both pick one up for the defense. And they're actually both going to go towards mid and B. Four members in mid and B for Risky right now. Going for the peak, Nami gets dropped down to 26. But Chiefs, no, oh my god, a push up middle. Havoc gets dropped by Burn. Just going ham right now. He might, get a, he might have set it up here for Nami, but Nami not going to find the angle. It's actually Breaker who's going to get caught out. Top Gun hitting that shot with the AWP. And it's going to come back into a three-on-three -three as Nami does get rewarded for his patience. He catches out Burn, top mid. And so now, well, Chief, they've got, what, double AWP on T side. Not exactly the best weapons to go and invade a site with, but see if they can actually make it work. Well, they have a minute and 15 seconds on a map like Dust2 with two ops in your arsenal. I mean, there's at some point, Risky's going to have to peek for information and make some kind of a play. And look at this. Mid wide open. Lightstep gets a free kill. Kit's not ready for it. They were in the wrong position. Now Risky's completely split. One at B, one at A, and they still have no clue where this is coming from, and it's going to be long. Carry Bob's going to have to do something, and he does get one. That's traded, but now this is where that op is going to come into play. It's just cutting off the rotation from B. And it's a question of whether Lightstep wants to drop down or not to help his mate. He's got the flash. Might set it up. No, the bomb is just going to get thrown across. So they're playing it safe. They're just going to keep long control with that AWP. Probably plant for long as well if they have the time here. Lightstep just now picking up the bomb, and yeah. Straight up long plant. They have control of the situation. All they have to worry about is catwalk. And well, there's the incendiary to force Nami back, and he doesn't even have the HP to take that kind of fight. Has to sit it with, has to sit it out, has to wait it out. He's grateful for the extra five seconds they have on that bomb now. Yeah, right. That's perfect. He had a Molotov of his own that he chose not to use. He's gonna use a little bit of late. Give up his position just a little bit. 
Now he's going to be out slow. Almost hits that jumping shot. That would have been huge. But now, I mean, with one player long, he knows exactly where the second guy is. So he's got a tough, tough task to do, and Top Gun's just going to drop him. So the first round on the board for Chiefs now, one to four for Risky Gaming on the CT side, and that double op setup took, takes its toll on their economy. There's really not a lot of money for them to buy with, so they're going to have to go for just the pistols. Yeah, these. I mean, really, what's what's hurting them is the uh, is the fact that they took so much damage in that anti-eco round. That's right. come back to bite them here. So now Risky on pistols. They have a single flash. That's on Havoc and HE as well here from Breaker. And he's actually going to use it to cover the cross, but it's not good enough. He gets tagged down to 18 HP. That's going to cause a little bit of a pause there. And well, straight out onto the B side. I like this lack of respect. They know that it was a very late transfer over to the B site, and so Chiefs are taking advantage of it. Yeah, that op spots everything. So Burns going to get that first kill. Oh, that's the bomb. Carry. He picks up an AWP as well. Now this can get scary. Risky can meet up with him in the lower tunnels, and he's got an op and he's got range, but it does get smoked off. The timing is not with him that time. He guesses through the smoke. It's not going to work out. But with this op now, I mean, he can essentially just try and save this. They don't have to go for it. Uh, there was a man up top, top mid. He's holding off the rotation through mid. He's actually, well, buying a lot of time where Nami is concerned. Nami's going to get caught in the end by, um, who was that? Dexter. And while top gun misses the shot point blank and then just goes ahead and follows it up with the Glock. So much better anti-eco situation here for, Ch for Chiefs, honestly. They keep four players alive. They managed to save both of the AWPs. So now basically doing everything that they needed to here in this uh, in that sixth round. And it's a back to a double up, I believe, on, on the risky gaming side of things. Breaker has yet to pick his up. We'll see. Mm -hmm. They've been they've been switching things up a lot with the players getting aggressive up mid, double op peaks. This time they go back to something a little bit more standard. Cross over towards B, three members out long, but Chiefs has really slowed things down after those initial four rounds went the way of risky gaming. They kind of got punched in the mouth a little bit. So now they just want to wait back, see what they're gonna be going up against before they have to make that decision. And it's not a bad call. I mean, if you decide to actually change up the pace a little bit, they're going to lull Risky Gaming into a slower pace. And perhaps that could open them up to uh, some aggression earlier or later on in the half here where Chiefs can try and change it up and go for the fast put, for the fast push onto a site, fast kind of punish. I mean, for now at least, it's just a standoff here at long while Chiefs take over Catwalk. So they're being very thorough so far, Chiefs. They even have the man still waiting top suicide with the AWP, just looking into mid. Yeah, but the utility for the CT side is pretty much withered away. Two flashbangs to use, and they're both over at the B bomb site. So if this A hit comes in for Chiefs, and it is, there's not much for them to use. Havoc can't get the kill on Burn as he drops. He's just going to run through with a pistol, trying to help his mate out, and it works perfectly for him. So Bell's the opera out of a tough spot. That buys Nami some time, and carry back over towards Long. He's got to hold this off. Havoc with one more, but Dexter can't get anything done at Long for Chiefs as they just get whittled away. Oh, no. They try and plant the bomb without any cover as well. Light step. He gets caught. Oh, nearly a quad kill there for Havoc. He gets the headshot onto Top Gun, though. And so it's going to be on top, but the peekaboo kill comes in. Bomb plant did just barely happen, though. So there is at least a little bit of a silver lining there for Chiefs. But that was just all over the place, Moses. What, I mean, what a round from Havoc. Now, that's the thing. He can't kill that drop initially, but he knows he's done some damage. And he's just saying, I have to kill this guy or else my offer's dead. And that's just that's great teamwork because that's just knowing the offer's the linchpin in that kind of a setup. So you have to do everything you can to protect him. And he just pistol whips the guy. So, Literally. Yeah. I mean, Burn was not ready for him to just come through that smoke with the USP out. So he gets dropped, and then and then Havoc just adds two more on to the end of it. So really, really well done. Chiefs backpedaling just a little bit. Yeah, we're really seeing some good, um, whoa, mass peak in mid there. I mean, they got to be wondering what the hell that was about, Chief. Yeah, and, and off the back of it, it it's going to be a B-rush. They say, all right, you got the kill. We know that there can only be one guy there, and we're just going to take him out. Dexter gets that entry. Zeus, he's cutting off rotations. Didn't even look like Havoc was ready for someone to be there. So already, Breaker and Carry, they've got to be thinking, time to save. Yeah, time to back off, hold on to the guns. Unfortunately, it's not going to pan out for us this round. That was a very quick play there from Chief. You almost want to just see them keep going to the B site. They're really showing that they're quite effective at taking uh, control of it. Given the fact, well, I mean, well, actually, no, that's a lie, because the first time they went B, that was in that anti-eco, and they ended up losing three guys. So it could have been a little bit cleaner there. But this round, everything goes according to plan. And that's a lot of times now. I mean, Chiefs is going to be on top of this. Risky really has to stop. Uh, this is like the second time they piled four people in mid with two offs. And oh, look at that. They try and double peak Breaker in the pit. It almost works out for him. But now carries blind over towards Long. He's got to get this one kill. That Zuzi Breaker does win one at the off. This battle is crucial. And Breaker just doing some damage. But eventually the nade's going to take him out. And his teammate, Carrie, going to get hidden. And he can't. Burn's going to find him in the end. Wow. So Chiefs on the hunt clean everything out. And it's back onto a save for the defense. That was really nicely done. Yeah.
they even, actually managed to catch him, even with a shorter round time after the bomb goes up. Even with the three lo three members they lost, I mean, mm -hmm. they, it's, it's definitely worth it at this point. So they reset the economy completely here. Let's see, this time around, it is going to be the full-on stack towards the B site. Don't think that Chiefs should fall for this one. Not sure if there was a smoke in mid. We were trying to watch for that. Dexter was um, was peeking, but... Might have been a nade. Yeah, it might have been a nade, so they might have been able to sneak across Risky and keep that hidden, the fact that they are just, like, full-out waiting right now for Chiefs over here at B. But, yeah, Chiefs, they aren't trying to press forward. They're actually waiting to try and get the information of their own. Nice little shoulder peek there. Not sure if that was um, Havoc or Kit actually getting the shot off, but pretty quick. Yeah, a couple players in mid, uh, Burn and Zuzi, actually. Probing out mid just very quickly, seeing what kind of intel they could find. They didn't see anything. This is very patient out of Chiefs. They, they've just slowed things down massively. So trying to probe across the map, really haven't peeked up towards that A-bomb site, whatever. So Zuzi's going to be the first one to come out mid, seeing nothing quite yet. And he's going to hide in the smoke. Well, the rest of his team, uh, the bomb's up on Catwalk, so it looks like they are going to end up at the A-bomb site, which at this point is kind of just a guess. They've seen one player in B, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. So instead, Risky Gaming, as they've been doing this whole half, they take the initiative. They push through the B-tunnels. They're in lower now. They're going to spot some people up on Catwalk, but Zuzi and Top Gun get some kills. Yeah, they still have the bomb as well, Light Step. I mean, they have the bomb, they have the time, and they're actually going to run over towards that A-site. Considering Kit pushed into lower, he gave away the fact that B-Halls was out of control, and so they are just going to try and run straight up here. Burn! Taking point, taking bullets to the face, and just doing a fantastic job breaker, buying time. He just runs out of options, really. I mean, what can you expect him to do at that point? He had, he had Havoc there with him with the AK-47, but unlike, you know, the, 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 the a fantastic A defense we saw earlier, Havoc couldn't get anything done. So that is going to be another round for Chiefs as they close the gap here after a really, really tough start. They've won four of the last five rounds, and we do just have a quick pause as one player disconnected to get back in. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't be too bad. I mean, um, this has been happening all day, so the players, they know what's going on. Should just be a short break as Carry Bob gets things situated once again. He has his money as well. Or does he? Yeah, he's all right. Yep. Regardless. I think that's what he had. He was he was the lowest of all of them. I think he only had like 1,400, 1,600 before that. Yeah, okay. In that case, he should be fine. They can drop him a FAMAS or if he, he can just force up with the FAMAS. Well, look how, look how expensive this defense is all throughout this half. Another double op setup coming out. So uh, they don't want to shy away from this. Seems like it is a core strat, yeah. I mean, it, it was interesting because they won a lot of those first four rounds without a double op, and they switched to it, and it's been, you know, hit or miss. Well, it's such a, I mean, you're right to point it out. I mean, it is so expensive to go for. I mean, we have seen just how powerful it can be, though. And there we go, but you got to hit that shot. Like, that has got to be a guaranteed shot. And unfortunately, they lose both B defenders. And now, well, no fear from Chiefs. They just keep powering on through, and that's going to cost them in the end. It brings them back to a three on three, but still. Carry, Breaker, Havoc, all three alive here, and we'll see if they actually decide to go for the retake. Seems uh, like it. Yeah, it looks like they want to. Havoc and Carry coming through the tunnels. Just going to be Breaker outside with the AWP. He's going to be Molotoved off, though, so he can't assist his teams, at least from window. And Tunnels also is smoked off, so now Risky Gaming has that decision to make. YOLO, YOLO. Light step finds the one. Carry's going to get caught, and Havoc tries to do the best that he can, but Dexter there with the double to hold things down. Here's the point to bring up with that double op setup. Like, that's just a standard B rush with one of the ops over there. Um, and if you if you're not buying an op, if you have you know the five thousand dollars and you don't buy an AWP, you have a, you have an M4 and you're able to get you know smoke, some flashbangs, some all some utility to slow down that B push. Mm -hmm. You know to scare them away from it. But because they they've been investing in the double op and they haven't been able to do that round after round, Chiefs is like, all right guys, they're not throwing any Molotovs in B tunnels. Let's just hit it, see what we find. So. Risky now is the ones who've been put on the back foot. Five to five as Chiefs have made a really solid comeback here. Zuzi with the P90 is going to lead the way into this B bomb site. They clear out two members, but they don't commit wisely because Risky actually has a rotate over here. It's just pistols they're going against. So they're just going to go into it anyways. But it's going to be a clean out from Chiefs. Let's keep praising them, man. You know, let's keep praising them. I don't think they have any idea that Havoc is going in for the backstab as well. Top Gun still hanging around in mid as if he's waiting. And well, there's the push. Dexter's waiting for him. No, uh, no joy for Havoc in the end. <laughs> I'm just really impressed with Top Gun. Like, Top Gun continues to hit shots. It's almost as if, as if this guy didn't stop playing. Well, this was a point I brought up on the desk earlier, is, is that in the Australian scene, you know, they talk about him when I, when I talk to a couple of the analysts in the scene. Mm -hmm. They talk about Top Gun as a guy who doesn't need to be playing every day, who doesn't need to be super active to come in and be an effective player. That's like the reputation he has. So probably the best pickup that, that Chiefs could have gotten on short notice to get a standard. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly it, because they're talking, and they're just like, well, after this spray, as Breaker trades one for one, Kit is still alive, holding behind the big box. He's going to be able to trade up again. 
Nicely done. Still, B site should be under control here. Surprised that Dexter wants to back off and give uh, Risky a chance to get back into it. It seems like he almost wants to delay so we can help Zuzi get into the B tunnels, and Zuzi's just almost mm -hmm. saying, no, 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 go for it. So now they're a little bit split up as Zuzi comes to meet up with them, but this is actually going to confuse the hell out of Risky Gaming. They're like, all right, why are they not in the site planning the bomb quite yet? And that could cause Carry to peek for some intel, and if he commits a little bit too much, he's going to find the AWP of Zuzi staring at him. Oh, looks close there for a second. Zuzi, he's actually going to be able to get the um, Molotov down. Has a rifle as well, and wondering, how the hell did I pick up an empty M4A4? This is like the most casual B-Take ever. He's like, all right, let me pick up a new gun. I need to find what nades are on the ground. Just lounge my way into this bomb site. He doesn't even have the bomb. Like, Dexter's the one that needs to cross. I mean, oh, this no. is the flashbang as well, which is supposed to be a top flash for his team, but Zuzi's going to make it work anyways. Well, oh, that was awkward. That was a little bit too much. Why is this bomb not being planted right now? Okay. Well, Dami's just deciding, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and help you out, fam. Like... No worries. I Add some you. 1v1 stats onto my, onto my sheet. I mean, <laughs> right now, Dexter is just wondering. He knows that the guy went mid, and so he's making the correct call, getting on the other side of the wall. This is going to come down to whether Nami can hit the big shot. I mean, 17 HP. It's not perfect with the P2K. He's going to have to land two shots with it. There's the flash. Doesn't spot him. Yes, he does. Just at the very end there. So Dexter, he now has the info. He knows where Nami's playing from. Decides to continue to challenge, when right now he should just be sitting and waiting exactly for that tap to come through. So now it's a question of whether Nami's actually going to be able to stick it, and of course not. Dexter peeks forward, picks him off. That round got so hectic there in that two-on-two. -two. Um, I'm so confused right now. So Nami gets the TK, can't win the one-on-one, -on -one, and that's that's going to be just in terms of your mor morale, like a, in this Super matchup. Tilt the really, yeah. yeah, that's going to be that's going to be painful. Either way, five to seven now, Chiefs. And this is the thing, back onto this buy that they've been, the, the double ops setup, the ops that Risky's been investing in for so long, this is what happens. You can't buy continuously in a row because you're never building up money because they're not winning these rounds and they're investing in that expensive weaponry. So you see it's just buy, save, buy, save, instead of, you know, scrapping together some Famuses, some M4s, even maybe if you have to do one or two pistols. I'm wondering right now how confident Risky feel in their T-side. That's going to be the big question because they aren't going to get too many rounds off of this. There's the shot. I was about to say nicely done for Zussi, but he does get instinct, so down to 6 HP, not ideal. No, but that gives them an advantage. Now they can sit back and wait for some kind of information push out of Risky. Three members over at the A-bomb site. Actually, Kit has dropped down towards CT spawn, but still, control for Chiefs across the map. Top Gun waiting for any kind of push in upper B. You see Burn here just manning down mid. No one is peeking aggressively, so he's just going to go back and meet up with the teammates at Long A where they have complete control, and they can leverage that and do a pretty easy A-take. And Top Gun's got an AK now. He's changed it up. It says it's going to be Zussi with the AWP. They want the low HP guy to just kind of sit back and pit and stay alive. That's real smart on Chief's part. Top Gun gets that smoke down. And so now the push is going to come in through here. And things are about to get hairy for Top Gun. Because he's got Havoc looking at him. Exactly. Havoc, Kit. He was about to get caught in a triangle of doom. So definitely not ideal. They almost stopped the plant with this jumping, jumping pistol. Either way, there it is. Carrie finally does get the kill on a Dexter burn. He's going to bail out. He does throw that Molotov to protect him, but Havoc gets a kill as well. Now this is going to be a tough spot for Chiefs. Zuzi crucially wins that fight out towards Long, so he can stay camped out there. And Burn is making a play in this smoke, but Zuzi's going to get the kill. They're on the bomb. That smoke might be blocking him off a little bit. He's got to hit this jumping shot, and there it is. So low. Three jumps in a row. He spams a couple bullets into him. And now it's going to be easy for Chiefs. Oh, how frustrating is that, right? And the smoke. They're still waiting around to see if Breaker's going to be around, but he is going to be able to get that one kill. Zussi, however, staying alive at Pit. He's going to be the hero of this round. Triple kill for him in the end. With just that 6 HP that he took at the very beginning. Yeah, even Top Gun with a little bit of a grin there. A little bit of a soft chuckle. See, the, okay, so this is the thing. The first four rounds, Risky Gaming goes up 4-0, and even in the early portions of that half, they were with the rifles. They were so aggressive, pushing up mid, pushing up catwalk, finding kills. Now with this double op setup, they're playing far more passively, and Chiefs are just kind of picking them apart. Well, this is the issue that you have to have when you um, when you give your opponents too much space on the T side. Is you need to be bopping them, and I mean that's the point you're making right now, Moses. You just got to bop them on the nose a little bit at least, keep them guessing. And again, they go for the flash uh, setup over at Long, risky just to get to some kind of control going. Carry Bob is not going to be able to hold that down on his own with Havoc holding on a slope. Havoc with an M4 though, so. We're not actually seeing the AWP come into play on the A site. Instead, Breaker is still chilling out over here in mid. Yeah, that needs to get switched around. I'm assuming Breaker's just going to be waiting to boost up Havoc and CT spawn to watch for a mid B split. Seems like it. 
and ba Breaker is going to be the one that goes back towards long A. So that's exactly what just happens. But now he's got to get back there with that AVP. But this is going to this might just be perfect. If Chief don't check for this, it could be a scary situation if they commit to this B split. I wish we were watching from Light Steps per perspective right now because he might. He is looking like he might just check for the angle. He's right below, and it doesn't matter. He gets spotted by Nami. And Nami with that AWP drops the bomb as well. 50 seconds left on this clock. There's the smoke going down, and Havoc is in the prime spot. It's his time to shine, and there we go. Picks up the first, looking for the second. Finally, they figure it out, but the damage is done. Perfectly done here by uh, Risky to shut Chiefs out. Although, as I say that, Top Gun just comes up with two kills. That's a nice pair of shots from Top Gun, but 35 seconds left, one on three. He's going to have to get the ace, and the bomb is down at mid. So Risky don't even have to peek into this bomb site. They can just sit back and wait for Top Gun to come to them. And clock's dwindling down quickly. 25 seconds is going to feel so short. There's really not too much he can do in this kind of a spot. Can you find Those, an M4 somewhere? He has a lot of nades to work with, but I mean, this is just eating too much time, what he's doing here in the B bomb site. Oh, there's dead on wallbang, and he doesn't take any damage. All right, there we go. Havoc will get the job done in the end, but. Is it just me, or did that look like it was that just like full on. spray into Top Gun, and Top Gun was just like, nah. He's like, no, no, no. I'm a tank. <laughs> I don't need, I don't take that. I don't take damage. Six to eight now. Risky Gaming get back on the board after losing six in a row. So they were up at one point very, very much, and they've lost massively here. And it's back to this heavy mid setup right off the bat. And it's going to pay off for them this time. Both ops peaking, Nami and Breaker. Nami's going to get the first kill, but Breaker is brought down to eight. Though know, Nami has gotten a second kill as well. Now it's all on Kit. He's run so low with his B push, but Nami with a third. Coming up big first team. Breaker tries to come in quickly, and Nami, so, he can't do any more aggression. 13 HP, he's got to wait for his teammates. He might actually hunt him. I don't know. Burn, he's so very low. 60 HP on him. Dexter's not going to help much either. He got dinked earlier, it looks like. So right now, this is all on Risky just playing it patient. They should have this round on lock. They have plenty of of utility to use as well with the double incendiaries to clear out some of these unlikely angles. Not the best incendiary to throw down, unfortunately, especially because Dexter's got the angle on window, but he backs off just in time. There's the shot and he misses it and this is going to be it. Havoc with the double entry kill onto the B side, just opening it up. Such an awkward situation to be in with that two men for Chiefs there where, where um, Dexter was just so low. Couldn't push back into those upper B tunnels because if anyone's there, he doesn't have the angle, he's just going to get dropped. So. A very, uh, very weak crossfire to be set up, but they did everything they can. A nice half, a nice recovery from Chiefs after getting punished early on. Nice half by both teams, though. I mean, it was an early lead for Risky, and then Chiefs comes back into it. So eight to seven for the Australians. Yeah, I, th I, got, I think we got to give it to Risky. We have to stop underestimating these guys because, I mean, versus MVP, they showed up in a big way. Definitely not what we were expecting, them yeah, being the underdogs. Was... And here, it's a similar situation. Look at Havoc, 17 and nine on the scoreboard. Yeah, Havoc is just going ham. I mean. There is balance, and kind of balance on both sides, considering Light Step's only six frags for him, whereas, you know, Kit on the T side now, four frags. Yeah, but Havoc, Carry, I mean, the Opera's trying to find something, some space to work with. Both of them, they're, they're, they're all showing at least a little bit here. I think the pressure is really on Chiefs now to, to hold them off, because Risky have got to be feeling good about that CT half. Look at Zuzi pushing up. He's going to try and punish him with their own medicine. He's all the way at mid already. I think he's been spotted out, though. He's taking a little bit of damage. Four members of Risky Gaming are in the B tunnels, ready to go. It's just Nami spotting out for some aggression. And so far, I mean, he's pretty much, now they know at least that there's a man wait, holding all the way back here in T-spawn. Could be the free kill here for Zussi, and he gets hit the fadeaway headshot, taking Nami out. And now they can just collapse on this B side if they want to, knowing that nobody's coming to be pushing from A. Instead, it's just all pressure on B. Chiefs looking to just collapse on this though. Light step, I called him out, and he got like two kills, nearly three. Nice round from Chiefs. They had two players on that on the platform watching for any kind of slow B play. They do get smoked out, but a third player was there so quickly. He was play, playing close up mid, and despite spotting out that early push to still get punished by it, that's a little bit unfortunate. And Risky Gaming can't come away with that second pistol, so Chiefs grab a good lead here, nine to seven. It's gonna be a buy up though for Risky. They do have the armor, the Tech Nine's trying to go for damage. They've got the flashbangs. They've got a smoke as well to use. Yeah, uh, and they decide to play it standard, at least for now. Two guys pushing into upper dark, sure. But then this is this is very much like a default kind of approach to it for Risky Gaming. Instead of actually trying to commit somewhere with a rush or just all out aggression with the Tech Nines, they decide to play it slow, count on the utility to carry them through later on. Carry is going to get tapped a little bit over here at Long House, though, so that's not ideal for him. He gets dropped down to half. Yeah, and, and, and Chiefs open up with a pretty, you know, pretty standard setup, a 2-1-2. 
So they're they're playing very much retake on A for the time for the, for the early portion of the round. Dexter has rotated back. Now you see light step there as they know they could have made their way up catwalk once that smoke plume's in middle. So they've kind of adjusted to what they've seen so far, but they don't know what's happening. And it looks like this might just be this is going to be some kind of mid B. The bomb is outside of B tunnels right now. Mm -hmm. Almost, I think these cat guys are going to drop off and go CT spawn while two members come out of mid. I would assume. It's almost what it looks like. Yeah, there we go. Timing with the flash. They're going to drop right into CT, into Light Steps, waiting arms. He's got this Tech 9. He's getting shot in the back now, looking for a kill. Instead, it's going to be Zeusy in mid. And what is this? It's just like total chaos. Everybody walking right past everybody, getting shot in the back. Well, there's the pressure. Top Gun comes into play. He takes out Breaker, but then Havoc with the Season 75 is going to take out another one. Can Carrie actually get the bomb plant, though? Because that would be a punish huge. burn. Can't do it. Now it's over. Now they know exactly where he's at. He's going to push through. Gets dropped. Yeah, there's going to be some frustration there for sure. I like the, the creativity, side. though. You don't see that too often. What, the jump down into CT? Like, like, this, like the two come out mid and the two drop off catwalk at the same time. They, mm -hmm. they just had to land those shots for mid. If that, had, if that kill had come a little bit quicker, that might have been something they could work with. But also, the Chiefs, that setup they had, the 2-1-2, two, two, I mean, that completely denies any kind of mid-B play, no matter where it comes from. Fair enough, yeah. It was the timing, unfortunately, as well with that flash. I think that was the main thing that kind of uh, screwed Risky up there. Aggressive push to top mid again. Easy kills coming in here for Zussi. And well, yeah, just total all-out destruction. Zussi's just like, all right, you're going to push mid on us. We'll push mid on you. We'll see who can do it better. And right now, at least, I mean, granted, this is the beginning anti-eco sort of situations, right? So, yeah. you know, the, the, you're, getting, you're getting beat up, and this is how it's going to go. And now there's a double op setup out for, uh, for Chiefs on the CT side. Top Gun and Light Step both picking up and up. No AWP off for risking gaming. They were dependent on those in the first half. Can't quite afford it just yet because of that buy into the second round. They're going to do their, they're gonna have to do their best. Everything's smoked off right now. They're trying not to get punished by any of these ops. Yeah. But they haven't even, they haven't even spotted out one, much less the second. Did they spawn? No, Top Gun didn't see anybody. He wants to get a punish with that HE, though. And well, again, Risky, they're going to spread out. Top, not going to make it out. Kit hits a great headshot. And that was from up close at head well, at headshot box. Hey. Yeah, that's just really awkward for Top Gun to deal with. That was almost like a, an accidental double peek where he's peeking up at the guy on catwalk and someone just swings out on him. So he gets punished for being overexposed. So now Risky can slow things down. Over a minute left in the round, and it's a five on four. A little bit scary, though. It looks like they want to hit long in the late round, and it seems like there's going to be two players from Chief here to defend that. Yeah, this is going to come down to how quickly Lightstep can rotate over to support Zussi. But I think, uh, if anybody, they can count on Zussi. Chief, so far, today at least, he has been stepping up. So here we go. Flashes. Zussi pretty, pretty blind, but he's still hanging in there, and they haven't been able to push past that line. And so now it's whether he gets the, uh, the element of surprise as they come across. Yes, he does. Nearly gets two. If he'd have picked up Carry Bob as well, that would have been huge. But for now, at least, if Lightstep can keep control of Catwalk, this is where he's exposed. Easy shot for him. Not going to get the follow-up, though. So far, Risky are actually getting the trades to go their way. Yeah, this is really nice. They even have one member in mid. Nami gets another one with the AK-47. So now Dexter's about to be found out. They see him. That mid player is going to pounce, but Carey just ends it himself. He's going to salvage an AWP as well for his team. So a really nice round for Risky Gaming. Trades all across the board early on. And, and they can do that. That's the thing. They got that opening pick, so they can afford to do those trades. It comes out in their favor every single time. And there's the big, well, the, the fact that they are going for these double AWPs. Chiefs just not going to have the money to go for a buy. It's actually very similar to what we saw from, you know, Chiefs in the first half. And for Risky, I mean, right now we're seeing a pretty close replay. Yeah, just buy, sell. Look at Zuzi. Once again, being aggressive, and he brings him down so low. Can't get the kill. Nami, he's got to fall back. Zuzi does get it. He keeps pushing. He's dick Nami, so Nami's going to get chased down. Some good kills out of Chiefs, and even Nami's going to fall here. So Chiefs take the initiative, push up mid, find a couple kills, but the bomb is getting planted in the B bomb site. Now is the question, are they going to go for this? They have an incendiary to play with. I mean, they're not rich to the point where, even off of an eco round, that they're going to be able to full buy. So this is, yeah, it's, it comes down to whether they can get a kill very quickly here. Havoc is at the back of the site, and had Top Gun actually hit that, that would have been huge. Because now, well, he needs to just hope, cross his fingers, hope that he can force the man out into the open, or manage to actually get the kill, and it's just not going to happen. Carry Bob and Havoc playing it so well together. Yeah, really nice hold. Under a lot of pressure as well. That was a, a really good effort at that retake in a three on two. They did pick up the guns. They didn't have armor, though, to work with. But it is going to be back onto the buy for them, up by two rounds, 11 to nine. Lightstep is the only one with an AWP. 
Top Gun is back onto the M4, and the question that we have to ask is how aggressive is Zuzi going to be? Because he is just, you know, you joke about the YOLO mode all the time, but he's been flat out pushing Catwalk, pushing up mid most of the rounds in this half. And now he's going to be pushing long? No. Oh. Just holding in close. Top Gun in mid, trying to apply a little bit of pressure here if he can find the chance to get through, perhaps. Wow, that would not be, that would be ill-advised. Instead, a little bit of a dunk nade on a kit. Complete mid control for Risky right now. They, they can they can go up catwalk if they want. Top Gun was playing close up, but now that the smoke has disappeared, he's kind of got to fall away. Playing a little bit more cautious because he did get punished last time he was over aggressive. And it looks like Risky Gaming in this default setup they have, I mean, they're waiting for this kind of a peak. Nami, that flashback blinds, and he almost had the chance, and even Top Gun, he's playing with fire here. Yeah, they are both playing with fire. He just keeps on re-peaking mid, and somehow he keeps surviving. You think he'd have gotten his head taken off by now, but no. I mean, so far, Risky are actually, should actually be pretty happy with the situation as well, given the fact that Chiefs have used a lot of their utility. 50 seconds left. Only a couple of flashes left to work with here in a single incendiary. So let's say Nami patiently waiting for that flash, just split second off, so he does get um, he does get blinded by it. But they will get control of Catwalk now. Dexter has to appear to these nades and these footsteps on Catwalk from CT spawn, but he hasn't rotated back. So it, it almost seems like Chiefs has been punished in practice by mid-B splits, and that's why they're playing these 2-1-2s. Two they have two players in mid right now. Just no matter what happens, they don't want to get split on that B bomb site. so it's going to be an A hit. Zuzi gets the first kill out towards long. Right step gets a double, huge hold, and all of a sudden, Risky has just been shut down. Yeah, follow-up from Lightstep. He's playing in that key position. And then Nami, focused on the cars, gets caught for free by Dexter. So, yeah, I mean, Chiefs right there. That, that's basically when it all goes according to plan. Your opera gets a two-for-one. You know, that's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, and at this stage in the match, at 11-9, to now 12-9 to for Chiefs, having a round where they win, where they don't have anyone fall whatsoever, just such a dominant round win. Now they have the economy built up for this, for any kind of op setup they want to have if they do lose that gun. But this late in the half, it gives them such a powerful position to play from to close out this match. There's the flash, there's the spray. Nice fall on AK spray, and then Dexter there to hold it up. Pretty much the worst case scenario for Risky in this anti-eco round. Not a single point of damage taken by Chiefs. Yeah, not enough flashes. That first one might have done a little bit, but I mean, you got two players posted up on that choke point, so easy spray down for Chiefs. And now it's a commanding lead. Two rounds, they haven't lost a single player. You can see the AK's out. Nami's only on a Tech 9, so he can have that Molotov, the smoke, the full utility set up for his mm -hmm. team. Havoc has no grenades whatsoever. And Chiefs, they're just sitting over there, happy as can be. They can afford anything they want. Yeah, they've got good bank. If they lose this round, they can pull by behind it, so no worries here on the defense on the CT side. Light step, we'll see if he actually decides, if he actually gets a kill eventually here. He has gone aggressive, and so risky, yeah. This is why he's trying to change up the angle of his jump. He knows that an op could be waiting on the other side. So he manages to spot it out that once again, you know, light step is hanging out on the A site. But got to wonder how, how obvious that is. Actually, it's pretty incredible how much utility Chiefs use in middle early on with these two players here. There's only one smoke left on the entire CT defense with, you know, a minute and 15, a minute and 10 left on the round now. So they've got to use that wisely. They do have the Molotovs to back things up when the executions do come into play. Mm -hmm. And they were showing earlier that they, they do know how to pace themselves with the incendiaries. They aren't chucking them out too early on in the rounds. Once again, I, I mean, this is the thing. Last time Risky won a round was when they did a delayed long take, and they just traded their way out. So it, they're going right back to it. Three members coming out long, but Zuzi's in a really tough spot to clear out. Doesn't look like they're going to check and have it look the wrong way, but Zuzi actually misses the spray completely. That is a massive mistake, and now Lightstep has just got to bail out. A lot of damage done, but the kills are going the way of Risky now on a five on t three. Oh, unfortunately, he's just a split second too late. He might get caught by the man on catwalk, though. No, he's got his teammate Dexter there to watch his back. And so now it's all about Long. Not going to hit that shot either. Lightstep, and then he just roasts alive. <laughs> what an awkward round for Lightstep. He couldn't figure out where he was taking damage from in time. So it's going to be burned in a one on three. They are low HP. That Molotov might do the trick, but no. Carey's able to make it out just in time. He's going to be in Goose. There is no AWP out towards Long. It's Havoc who gets caught out in the open. He was low. It's burned. Can he do it? He does. He gets the last two. What a round win. And you can see how hyped up Chiefs are. The last bullet. The last bullet. Burn lives up to his name. Quad kill, retake, 13th. Now going into the 14th round here for Chiefs. And that's going to feel soul shattering here for Risky. They know that they were gifted that round. Pause called, called by Havoc. You see him face palming as well, so 
Yeah. Well, I mean, they just got gifted that, especially after how Zeus managed to fluff the spray completely. Yeah. I mean, so many situations in light step, like just looking, just the timing of where he was peeking with that out. He just couldn't find anyone that he was supposed to be defending himself from. So, that, yeah, that was a round that Risky Gaming, that's incredible that they were, that uh, Chiefs is able to bring that one back. Yeah, that's just unbelievable. And they know it right now. They got to be frustrated with themselves. They know that they had that in the bag to keep things alive. It would have been perfect as well, because then they would have kept Chiefs off of 14 rounds. Now, now they've got their backs to the wall here, Risky. And this is a best of one format as well. This is the lower bracket match. So the, w the loser here goes home. Second seed goes to the winner. So this is it. Do or dime. Oh, and the tough part is now you have a Galil, two Tech Nines. Havoc might have an AK-47, but they have two ops to go against. So now you're, you're low in utility to smoke and flash these oppers away from angles. You know, your Galil cannot punish as well as an AK-47 can. You only have two of those, the Tech Nines at range as well. So worst case scenario here for Risky Gaming. After through stretches of this match, Avaklu actually looked really good. Mm -hmm. No, so far, really, they really they are actually showing quite a good fight. Let's see it here. And everybody seems to be waking up on Chiefs as well. That's the one thing. The guys who were hanging behind a little bit in the, on the uh, on the scoreboard yeah. definitely started to catch up. And Nami just roasting. Wow, so much damage taken by a single Molotov. Three guys so low, and they're just really trying to change up the pace here, Risky, but guess who's waiting for him? Light step with that AWP. Yeah, and Zuzi's here as well, combined for all five kills. Light step, beautiful shots from him. 15 now for Chiefs, and they're piling it on. And it seemed like Risky had a plan for that, that, that tactical where they where they noticed that there was so much pressure being on, put on mid by Chiefs throughout this half. Mm -hmm. They're like, all right, let's get up catwalk quick because that's where the second player in mid comes from. It comes from the A-bomb site. So we know we might have to deal with an opera towards long, but if we can get past him, maybe we lose a guy. We can get into the site and play the post plant, maybe trade that kill. Right. But it said that uh, Chiefs switch it up and Zussi punishes him for it. Well, now we have to see Risky. Their backs truly are to the wall. This is it, match point. And quite a few of them as well for Chiefs, so they have to keep their cool. They do manage to get three rifles, a couple Tech Nines again. And going back to default, basically. No aggression, no early aggression. They just got shut down so hard that they aren't interested in rushing anywhere on the map at this point. They're going to try and slow play it here. And they have been playing it close. They have been managing to pick up kills, so... I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen here for Risky. Yeah, and they're going to have to do... It's going to be really interesting to see where they decide to go, because coming up Catwalk, they've just been getting shut down, not just last round, but even before that. Havoc does spot one out, sprays the door with that Galil, can't find any damage whatsoever. Now Burn's going to fall back towards that B bomb site. Zuzi's still playing out long, and Nami is probing up Catwalk for Risky, but, I mean, no real information has been gathered except spotting one player in mid. Chief's being very mobile now, switching things up, a more standard setup to have with three out towards uh, the A bomb site, now towards long. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and the bomb sneaking its way into mid. So this does make you want to think, okay, they are going to try and split it. Yeah, the push is instantly coming in here from Zeus. Dexter spots them out in mid as well, and he saw the bomb. So they should know exactly what's happening. Burn will find a long-range shot on Havoc. Burn actually shutting down mid right now. And then Top Gun's there with the AWP to lock down Upper Dark. It's falling apart here for Risky. This is going to be the moment for Chiefs. As Kit does manage to actually stay alive for a little bit longer, Top Gun is going to hunt him down in the end. And it's going to be a 16-9 to scoreline here. Chiefs. They take the second seed in the group after all. Yeah, nicely done from them. Kind of a little bit of a, I mean, a lot of the, the both of these teams were kind of the question marks of this of this group of, you know, the inexperienced teams, how are they going to play when they came in? And Australia's rejoicing right now. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to Renegades playing tomorrow. Hopefully they can get two teams moving on to the minor. That's what they're thinking. And well, I mean, yeah, t tomorrow is going to be like a bit of the group of death as well, though. Yeah. Just considering who's actually playing in it. Mongols, Tyloo, Renegades, like that is, it's going to be brutal. But yeah, Risky definitely going to be feeling disappointed. I mean, this was still one of their first lands. I mean, they literally just had the hoodies made, like, I guess the day yeah, before they left. Yeah, they got them like the day before they left. So, I mean, still great performance from them actually putting up a fight, getting, getting into the second seed battle. They didn't go out fourth in the group. They got out third. And so it was a good fight from them. Yes, they certainly played much better than I think a lot of us expected coming into this tournament, and I'm sure that we will hear all about that from the desk. Well, it looks like Risky Gaming, they had the side they needed, they had the start that they needed, but we they were riddled with mistakes. So many mistakes. What's the pressure getting to them, guys? Could very well be, but I also think the fact that they 
I guess their reluctancy to actually change things up, they were really adamant about going for that double up setup, which is okay, uh, absolutely. But I think you have to you have to kind of face the facts at a certain point and feel like, well, we can't let this get too far away because at, at a certain time, Chiefs just started grabbing round after round after round. And there was never any point in time where, where um, Risky actually had an opportunity to really break the economy of Chiefs, uh, Chiefs in that first half going... Uh, going late into it. I mean, were they, were they playing out of their comfort zone? We saw a lot of aggression. That seemed to surprise you. Uh, yeah. I was really surprised at how... Uh, they, they had a great start on their uh, on the CD side. And what surprised me was how aggressive they were on the CD side. I was talking about how they have a very novice approach to the game. You know, playing it safe, playing it very passively. They have the two ops. They can, you know, get, give the ops to them and play it, uh, play it later in the game. The fact that they got a little too ahead of themselves, I felt. And the fact is they could never really build an economy. And they couldn't really stop... Uh, Chiefs B push most of the times like they were getting wrecked even though they did manage to get the retake a couple of times they were losing like four guns three guns all the time so not quite able to build up the economy not a not quite able to really get maybe the 10 11 rounds they actually needed and on the T side I really loved what uh, Chiefs did you know just completely shut him down and, of, and again some very sloppy play on the T side coming oh, out yeah. from uh, risky esports in the end there I don't know just throwing it away just running through Molotovs taking tons of damage I don't know uh, what was going through the heads uh. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, that, no, I get yeah. The, round that, the round that's going to haunt me tonight is the one where they push out long, and you see Susie first have the, the sickest whiff spray oh, God, of this yeah. entry. It's like 30 bullets that doesn't connect with anything at all. Then Light Shot gets caught, you know, sandwiched on the site, misses two fairly biddable shots on the site. Everything's just chaotic as hell. And somehow, even with all of that going wrong for Chiefs, Burn just manages to clutch it for them. Like, one versus know. three, of course. Yeah. Like, <laughs> one versus four, I think. Is it one versus four? Yeah, I think it was a one v four. I mean, oh that's ridiculous. I, I just zoned out at that point. I was like, <laughs> I don't even understand. My analyst brain can't uh, cope. <laughs> it was unreal. But now, yeah, Risky definitely had the the chance to to take this game. They got off to, it's like you said, they got off to the good start on the CT side. And I think it, as long as they would have been okay with just rolling with one op, maybe getting a couple of more buys in, they would have been way better off because a lot of the time, you just see one buy, instant eco, one buy, instant eco. Right. Or even double ecos and then one buy, eco. And that's not really going to work, especially when I think that a team like Chiefs are probably going to be uh, susceptible to just falling for the temptation of doing four spies themselves because they are, you know, playing with stand-ins. They're not as uh, as gathered, I guess, or so as well practiced as, as a normal team would be. Right. So they could probably easier fall into that, that trap that a lot of Pug teams do. All right, so Blair, do you have uh, any last final thoughts about this one to just wrap a bow on this match, just tie it all up? Risky threw it away. That's all I have to Risky say. Risky threw it away. I mean, taking nothing away from uh, Chiefs. Chiefs. I mean, um, Lightstep was pretty impressed with the up. He did with a couple of rounds, but uh, pretty impressive stuff coming out from him. Top Gun's hitting shots. They were all doing their work, and well, there we go. They have the other second team, I think, to... Uh, you know, to qualify, if I'm not mistaken, to go into the uh, yeah. semis. Yeah, it's going to be them uh, with Cyber Zen. Cyber Zen definitely had a much stronger showing here today. Looked like the uh, more stable of the teams, but we will take a look at the brackets now for a quick recap of the action that we saw here taking place on day one of IEM Season 10 here live from Taipei. Of course, we can see Cyber Zen 16-10 perhaps a bit inflated that first result. Uh, should have been 16-3. It should have been 16-3. I, like I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm with you there. With you there. And of course, Cybersen then did go ahead to 16-3 Chiefs, who uh, had a very close game. MVP Carnal, they didn't quite show up today. That was disappointing. That was uh, a disappointment. Yeah, story. I expected a lot out of them. So I'm super sad to see them going. I thought we were going to see the rematch between Chiefs and, and MVP in the well in, in this game we just saw, but that was not meant to be. Risky, they played a good game, beat out MVP. So that's sad for sad for MVP because they seemed really excited to be here as well. I guess well, all teams are, but. You know, I, I have my hopes up. I guess at the end of the day, things sort of, I guess, panned out as we all expected it to. We had Cyber Zen. It was always going to be a toss-up, I guess, between Chiefs and uh, MVP Carnal. But uh, that is, of course, the end of day one's action. Tomorrow, you can catch day two's action where we'll cover Group B. And there's a lot of interesting matches, of course, to be coming up there, especially if you're a fan of Renegades. Their story has been quite interesting to follow. And, of course, we'll get into that in much, much more detail tomorrow. So stay, or well, sorry, tune in again tomorrow for more action here live from Taipei for IEM Season 10.